Hello, my name's Jeffrey, and today we're going to talk about selecting an independent press. Taking a look at my handy dandy to-do list. Um, I'm still here, kind of. I just finished making the corrections that my editor told me to do, and I've sent it back to her now for round two. So that should be, I don't know, three weeks, maybe? And then we need to do the copy editor after that. Um, design cover is more or less done. Formatting can't work on that until after. The editing is done, obvi. Then here we come to publishing and distributing. My original plan was to do Amazon Kindle and also Amazon Create Space because it was easy, it was simple, and it was quick. But after doing some extensive research, I discovered that Create Space doesn't have a very nice product. Just isn't up to my standard of quality because I'm an artist, damn it, and I'm not gonna put something out in the world unless I am proud of it. So I had to rethink how I'm going to pr to print these physical copies um, and also distribute them now because Create Space was going to handle that too. So, so why have I turned my back on Create Space? Well, I've heard some terrible horror stories about the, the, the quality of work that they do. Like there would be glue coming out of here, out of the top, stories of books getting bent in, in, in packaging and pages being bent just because they, they don't know how to package their books safely. And also, a huge problem is the actual covers. They do offer a, this is not a Create Space book, I'm just using it as an example because it's very similar. This is actually nicer than a great Facebook, but... So imagine this, but shittier. Um, sorry, Seth, I should probably cover this. Anyway, CreateSpace offers two cover styles. You get the gloss, which is this, all shiny. Um, except I think it's even more shiny than this. So kind of just hideously shiny. Uh, and then you get a matte. But the problem is CreateSpace books curl like nobody's fucking business. They just just sitting there, they'll just curl because they what because they do it cheaply. And also the pages on the inside, they offer two different kinds of paper on the inside. One is white and one is cream colored. I think the cream is like a little thicker. And but it's not a nice cream. It's like this. It's like sickly cream. Like the book has a tan. I don't know. The closest thing I have is this which I have censored to keep the author's integrity. Uh, but see, this is, a, this is what a Create Space book will do. It'll curl like this. And also, the page is on the inside. I mean, whatever, a page is a page, but if you're like me and you have crazy high standards, you're not gonna like these pages. It, maybe you can hear it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like paper. It feels a little, I mean, it does, but it feels like plastic. Kind of. It's too smooth. I don't know how to explain it with my words. And also, Create Space books, along with pretty much any print on demand books, will have this crease. Catch the light in the right way. This crease along the spine here. This extra crease on both sides. You can see there, yeah. And I just don't like that on my cover, sorry. Like regular books don't have that. Crossy, I hate this book, but it doesn't have it. <laughs> anyway, it's it's just a, just a flat, clean drop to the spine and also on the back. So, it's a subpar product, I was not happy with it. And also, also, I can deal with the subpar, pro well, maybe not, but what really got me was the price. If I were to go to Create Space, in order for me to get any money whatsoever, I would have to charge like $14, $15 for a book. And I'm just like, that's way too high for a first time author that's self published. No one's gonna buy that. And I would feel bad making people pay that. So it's just like, I was having a nightmare, <laughs> a life nightmare, and I didn't know where to go, so I was looking, I was doing some research online, and I found that basically anywhere you go with, that has print on demand, which is basically you order a book, it, the order goes back to the printer, and they print one single book, and then they send it to you. 
it's just a very inefficient process. In order for that to be like economically feasible, products used, the paper and the cover and the binding and all that, need to be cheap. And it just doesn't look good. So I was trying to find some place that doesn't do that. Some place that has offset printing, which prints giant batches all at once. And I found one. <laughs> Very nice. They supply a lot of options for printing, many more than Create Space would. The books are high quality, but will end up, since I'm printing them in such large numbers, keeping their retail price low and competitive with other mass market books. We're talking 11 bucks, 10 bucks, 11 bucks. Which is super important to me because I don't want to fucking rob people. Even if I think my book's worth it, I'm not gonna do that. It's called Books Just Books. They supply many options, but a lot of the options aren't even listed on their uh, website. I was overwhelmed with the number of paper options that they had, um, so I was in contact with a very nice representative there, and she sent me three, three books just to, just to see what the different covers options they have are like and what the different paper options they have are like. The first one, this is a gloss with the line. I just called her today because I was a little disappointed when I got these and I'm like, oh, they all have this line. So I called her and I asked, I'm like, what the hell is with this? I didn't say that. I'm like, what's up with the line? Like, I, 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 I that, this just screams self-published book to me and I don't want that. So she said, oh, like that's a desired effect to hide glue. Because when you open a regular book, there's glue on the inside. And I'm like, what? So then I opened this across the universe and I saw there's glue on the inside. Let me see, there's glue all over. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, I never noticed that. But you know, the trade off is that little bit of glue that no one will even notice, I didn't even notice it, um, versus a line going all the way down your cover. So I asked him, like, is there anything you can do about it? And she said, yeah, like, we can just not do that. And I'm like, oh, really? Uh, oh my god, my excitement level just shot through the roof because the gloss I hate, but this, they have a matte. It's, it's just, it feels so creamy. A good creamy, though. Not like the shitty pages. And it's just so nice, and it doesn't curl. It doesn't curl! That is, like, like goal number one for me, no curling. It's very nice. Um, and the paper inside, this, she gave me three books because she gave me three different kinds of paper. This is, I asked for the most, mar most mass market paper, and which is called 45 pound alternative offset. And um, this is like your standard paperback. It's thin uh, and, well, I mean, you know what it looks like. I mean, it's thin and it's, it feels like real paper and it feels like something you'd get, uh, you know, in a, in a mass market paperback. Uh, and then there was this, which is a white, which I just didn't, it, white is way too abrasive on your eyes. It's like, holy shit. Um, if you're doing a self-help book or a, something not, something non-fiction, white's great for, like this. So, white's probably great for that. But, um, no thank you. Oh, that was 50 pound white. And lastly, we have this 50 pound natural with the matte cover, and it is natural. It feels, there is texture to it. There is, it feels, it's weighty. It's, it, it feels like a real book, okay? Eleanor and Park right here. It's the same, it's the same exact paper as Eleanor and Park uses. It's the same exact paper that Across the Universe uses. And that's a bit smoother, actually. Whatever, I hate that book. It's real fucking paper, okay? It's not fake, plastic, whatever. Um, so, yes, this is my dream come true, then. I can do what I want, have it the way I want it, and also, as an added bonus, something CreateSpace does not offer I can get hardbacks with this. I can get hardcover copies of my book. Hardcover just looks so professional and just so, uh, you know, everybody loves a hardcover. It's more expensive, but everybody loves a hardcover. So I think I'm gonna do my review copies in hardcover, just to show off. I, know, I guess I'll, I'll print a few of those too to be available. I mean, I want them to be available. But how, I don't know how many to, I don't, I don't know how many hardcovers to print. So if you are interested, 
If you prefer a hard cover, even though it's gonna be more expensive, I don't know how much. If you're interested in that, let me know below. Um, and that should give me a rough guess on how many I should print. I'm going to print my first print um, in a quote, limited release of 3,000 books. <laughs> That's a lot of books. A lot of faith I'm putting in myself here. Um, but the bonus is, I'm, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sign all of them. So that would be cool, right? That'd be more incentive for you to buy an actual physical copy. Uh, and they're all gonna be really nice quality, okay? And it's all gonna be around 11 bucks, okay? Like 10.99 or something like that. But the downside to that is I have to pay for all of those books, um, which are cheaper, thank God. And for the sake of transparency, I'm just gonna tell you how much it's gonna be. In a run of 3,000 with all the things I want, it's gonna be just over $2 a book to print, so that's just over six thousand dollars <laughs> so that is a downside that is definitely going to keep some people from taking this route because not everyone has that amount of money but well, thankfully i have an investor so you might be asking yourself jeff you're gonna print three thousand books at two dollars a book and you're gonna make it cost $11? That's too much money for you. <laughs> the author, that's like $8 for you. Well, no it's not. Because yes, I have all these books, but I can't sell them myself from my garage. So I, I have no other option. I have to sell on Amazon because Amazon just is the best in the business right now. Something like 90% of all books sold are sold through Amazon. So I need them. So in order to do that, so I'm using a service called Fulfillment by Amazon, which is they're going to take all these books and store them in their warehouse, and then whenever an order is um, placed, they wrap it up and send it out to you. So it'll still be available on Amazon and yada yada. But to do that, they're going to take a large amount of money. I mean, like half my money. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I, I don't know, it's like a three fifty, maybe four dollars for every book sold, which is substantially more than I would also get through Create Space. But again, there's this gated window where you need to invest a lot of money in order to get out this money. Also, so, and I am spending an extraordinary amount of money, <laughs> um, which is why I don't feel as guilty. Getting those, getting that high royalty back. But I would feel incredibly guilty if it was like eighteen dollars and I was only getting like two dollars out of that. Like that, that, that seems like a horrible, horrible process. Which a lot of independent publishers do do, like do have shit royalties like that. Lulu, iUniverse. Um, there's a new one. It was Outskirts Press that claims they have 100%, that they give you 100% royalties, but I don't, they're just with an asterisk and small print of the size, like it's 100% your choice how much royalty you got. Okay. And their books have to be like $18. So yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm making the right choice here. It's like a win, win, win. It's like, why doesn't everyone do this? Well, everyone doesn't do this because it's, it costs a lot of money, so. I'm sorry. You know, a lot of people don't like to talk about money, but I'm just like, you know what? I want this to be out there as a resource to help people. I don't want to be like, I don't want to talk about money because it's private. Like, you know, that, that's not helping anyone. But that's just for physical copies. For e-books, I'm still going to go with Amazon Kindle. This is an exclusive deal with Amazon Kindle, blah, 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 which I'm not killer about, but that's the way it works. Um, and in order to do that, and I'm doing that because if they publish the e-book, it, uh, it, it goes into their system and then it gets ranked with other books and it says, you know, it, it, it pops up on bestseller lists, if I get there. Um, and it's just more exposure for people on Amazon.com. So, I just have to do that. I mean, I have to do that. There's no other option there. But I don't really care about the ebook, to be honest. It's just an ebook. I care about what you see with your own damn eyes, like this physical, what feels, because reading, for people who love books, reading is a is a is a tangible experience, not just a not just a in your imagination thing. So that being said, since my plans have changed slightly, I am not a hundred percent certain the book will be done by March twenty third as previously promised. But 
now that I'm using Amazon Fulfillment, I can allow for pre-orders. So I will promise you that the book will be available for pre-order by March 23rd. Hey oh, there we go, compromise, okay? And then the book will probably come out, I'm guessing in April. <laughs> I guess April, but ooh, I don't know. I don't know, I have to hire a publicist too. So that's more money that I need to spend, great. But that person, whoever they may be, will help me with a uh, publishing timeline and all that other stuff. So, yeah. Oh. So I suppose... <laughs> Having all this talk about the book, you know nothing about it. Do you want to know the title? Do you want to know what I'm naming this bitch? I don't know, is it too early to tell you? Oh, what the heck. Alright, the name of my book is... Pro-